right. Hey, everybody. Stephen Key here. And today I have a very special guest, Solomon. He's got this wonderful invention. It's selling everywhere. It's selling out. It actually works very, very well. Solomon, thank you for coming on InventRight TV. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. To be oh, OK, let's start at the very beginning. You've got a great product. James, this is jumping. Show the video. It is so great. Ooh. It is still great to be out of that tower. <laughs> this place has it all. Instead of a cell, I have a cell phone. Instead of knitting, I have Netflix. So many things to keep up with, like doing the dishes. Oh, oh. And you know the worst? A clogged bathtub drain. <sighs> Thankfully, I found Tub Shroom, Amazon's number one selling drain catcher. To clean it, just pull it out and wipe it off. Just like that, you keep your hair or your pet's hair from clogging your pipes. For a fraction of the cost and none of the hassle, you can solve a problem before it ever becomes one, like swiping left on your cousin's dating profile. <sighs> Instead of spending on expensive drain cleaners and plumber's bills, now you can use the money you save to buy really important things, like brushes, combs, shampoos, conditioners, scrunchies. So many scrunchies. Why this is a great product my daughter's using it. She called me up and said, this is fantastic. You got to interview this guy because this actually works. Why tub shroom? Why did you come up with the solution with all that hair? Uh, yeah, so the more hair, <laughs> the more hair that people have uh, on their heads, the longer it is, the more often your drains are going to clog. And if you happen to have multiple people in your household with long hair, it's just gonna clog even faster. So um, we actually face this problem in my household and in my partner's household. And um, we, you know, if you have pets, it just happens, you know, it just multiplies that factor even even higher. And uh, so we, we looked for solutions out there and we couldn't find anything that, you know, caught all the hair and prevented the clogs uh, that easily. So we decided let's let's just try to make make something <laughs> ourselves and, and and that we did you know um, and it was just happened to be mushroom shaped which is cute and, and people love it so so you start you've got this idea how do you how did you build your first prototype did you do 3d printing how did you test it out uh yes so we we actually went to home depot uh, we drew it out first and we knew um the the shape would be mushroom shaped just because that that is what was in theory would would work best where you, you know we knew we knew how to catch all the hair we didn't want anything to get through we knew how to be it had to be the hair had to be caught in one place you know neatly and and so so it's easy to clean people don't like touching hair so we actually went to home depot and we bought like um tubes pvc tubes we cut it up we used glue <laughs> and 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 our first um, uh, prototype, which was, you know, I have pictures of it. It was like a plastic, uh, plastic PVC thing, and it, it worked really well. So, so from there we went to 3D. You know, we, we did 3D um, printed prototypes, and then we went to you know um, uh, silicone prototypes, <clears throat> and uh, you know every step of the way it just kept working better and better, and got us more and more excited. So, I mean, did you have a background in building prototypes and in inventing? I mean, was it new to you? You just figured it out? I mean, how did you, how did you do it? Um, yes, yeah, so I have a background in, in business um, and sales and uh, management. And uh, my partner had a, a background in sales and, and in business as well. Um, we had dabbled in um, uh, kickstarting kickstarter in the past crowdfunding um and our first a project prior to this it didn't really take off but we learned a lot so you know that the lesson there is sometimes you got to just jump into it and do it f for the knowledge whether it works or not and 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 um the knowledge is you know sometimes it's priceless so that helped us with this when when we were um uh we we launched on kickstarter because we want to use that as a, as a validation and um, and to test uh, you know customer feedback, and, and to also take pre-orders because we want to try to sell out our okay. our first production run. Yeah. So um, oh, and and to answer your question, I think you said, do I have, uh, was it do I have inventing 
background? Yes. Uh, an adventure background? Yes. So now, you know, I had actually uh, um, um, done products prior to this as well, uh, you know, in terms of bringing it to market, selling it on Amazon, you okay. know, um, um, offering up to wholesalers. Um, and, you know, it was mixed success, you know, prior to this. Okay. So you just have to jump in sometimes. I want to talk about the crowdfunding experience for just a minute. So you've done it once, you had some experience, you do it again. Were you close to being manufacturable? I mean, did you really want to raise the money to, to manufacture? Where were you in that process to do that Kickstarter campaign? Okay, we were we we were prior to tooling. So we were um, we had a 3D prototype we were happy with. We were ready to go to tooling. Okay. But that costs that costs money and um prior to doing that and prior to taking you know more time into um uh, more of our time because you know we had full full day jobs we said okay we're going to use our experience that we had with kickstarter let's launch another kickstarter for this product okay let's do it better a little bit better this time let's um you know um let's see what what the response is and right there within a week we you know we hit our goal and we were getting great feedback from customers, and they said they saw they saw the video of the prototype and how it worked, and they immediately said, "We love it, you know, you know, we we can't wait to get it." So then, right there, we we greenlit the um, okay uh, the tooling. Yeah. Got it. So. so tell me, when you were doing the Kickstarter campaign, did you have any outside people to help you with that, or did you do everything yourself? <clears throat> um, to start, we did everything ourselves. Uh, we did the video ourselves. We did the copy ourselves. Um, it was just me and my partner. Um, we, we took the pictures ourselves. And then um, once after we launched, we started getting approached by, and this happens to everybody, you know, different um, uh, marketing companies. Oh, you know, we'll help you with this. We'll help you with that. And we were very selective, but uh, we did go with um, um, one one company in particular to help us drive traffic Got it. through uh, uh, paid ads and through um, um their newsletters because they, they already had a following of I don't know five thousand ten thousand crowdfunding um, individuals so they were right away that gave us a boost and and it kept our momentum going and they take a cut you know of a percentage of, of what they generate and it, it's fair you know it, it made sense it, it helped us okay. a lot okay good so we ever afraid that someone's going to steal it from you I hear that all the time you come out with a great idea you raise all this money next <laughs> thing you know you see it on Amazon two weeks later was that an issue <laughs> Uh, yes, actually. Um, I, so I, have a, I also have a background in law and, um, <laughs> so I knew right away that, um, Pat, uh, getting the patent, the design patent and the utility patent was, was, would be very important. Yeah. A lot of people wait, um, until their patents are issued before they, you know, take it to market. Um, so I knew the, the design patent process wouldn't take that terribly long. Um, so you know that was a priority for us. We we got that in in several territories. Okay. And then the uh, utility patent. I know typically that takes much longer, um, and especially if you run into um, um, hiccups. And and you know as well because you you know you have all those patents <laughs> yourself. Um, but you know uh, so it was a process. And and despite all that, we we did get knocked off. And 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 you know we we do continually fight it. And and um, as I tell you know people all the time if. If your product isn't worth getting knocked off, then you're not selling a lot of units. So, <laughs> so did you do a trademark to Solomon? Uh, yes. Okay. And did you yes. copyright yeah. all your visuals too? Did you copyright them as well? Uh, we copyrighted um, in early on um, uh, most of our visuals, okay. and um, we we trademarked and we do trademark everything um, that we bring to market. And so, so the plan is, you know, you can't. Um, it's hard to, to especially if you have a product that's not too expensive and, and it's easily copied or relatively easily copied. So you, you have to have a multi-prong approach of, of, of sort of building walls. Okay. And so we use patents, we use trademark. Um, and, and with trademark, you know, in terms of brand building, right? So we, our brand is, is by far the strongest, you know, in, in the space. Um, so it, even if people try to, you know, circumvent our patents or come up with okay. their own similar design. You know, we're able to to win on um, um, our our strong brand Got and um, yeah, as I said, our patents and 
being first to market and you know um uh, we have 70,000 plus reviews. Actually, we have 100,000 plus reviews if you co combine all our products on Amazon. And, and we're in um, over 20,000 to 30,000 um, uh, retail locations in North America, if you count Canada as well. So it's, it's, it's a great, um, and that's our formula. Yeah. All right, so you got a great brand. You're out there first. Kickstarter worked fantastic for you. You're just out, sell first, sell fast. Is that pretty pretty accurate? Hey, yes, yes. So, and we use this as a sort of a test as well. Um, in terms of, we get a lot of feedback, and oftentimes we take that feedback and we iterate, we improve. We're constantly improving our product. So, uh, for example, our first product has been improved over a dozen times to what it is now, okay. and people don't really notice, you know, unless you you you, it's it, it's unless you really pay attention. <laughs> but um, it, it helps because now our product now works maybe twice as well, three times as well okay. as our original product in terms of water flow and, and catching it. air and all that, all that good stuff. So you've expanded your product line. It started with the, the tub shroom, but now you're in the, the sinks, right? The kitchen sink, stuff like that? Uh, yeah, now we have products for every drain in the home. And that was our goal from, you know, from day one. When Once this tub shroom was working, we said we have to have products. And, and it's a no-brainer because they're all you know mushroom shaped. They all use essentially the same technology. And um, they're similar in shape. It's just the sizing, you know, okay. the uh, um, slight difference in functionality. And, you know, uh, some of them have been home runs. Some of them have been singles and doubles. And it helps us, you know, at retail as well. Because when we go to a buyer, they say, oh, do you, you only have one product? No, you know, we have a dozen SKUs that we can offer you. And, and they pick three or four that they like best. And it's it's been a great, a yeah, great they, uh, rollout. Yeah, they seem to, to like a whole a whole product line. Okay, so. Yes, yes, okay, exactly. Okay, um, how much money does it take to do all this? Uh, can I can I do it yeah, off a small uh, budget? So, yeah, no, that's, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we did it um, because of crowdfunding. You know, we actually only started with like, um, I think $20,000. And then the crowdfunding helped, you know, boost that up. And, and then we put a little bit more money, not not that much more. Okay. And then from that, it all you know snowballed. We 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 haven't you know it's been bootstrapped since, and um, got it. It's been pretty amazing. So, uh, what about the float game when you're doing retailers? Is that a problem? You get a big order from a retailer, and you got to float that a little bit. Is that a hard thing? Um, yeah. Well, it could be early on if if you don't have um, um, the capital and to sort of um, to get from one order to the next. Uh, but for us, prior to uh, you know going big at retail, we were um, growing rapidly online, okay. and that um, the revenue there came in quite quick. There's not much um, turnaround on that, yep. so we were actually quite cash positive. So in terms of the the retail side, it wasn't a problem for us. But you know we did we did have plans if we needed to. You know we could, we could you could get outside investment. You could. Uh, you could do factoring, which is, you know, um, sort of, uh, you know, take, you know, short term loans yeah. where it's for a percentage of the okay. um, of the uh, POs. You just somebody else floats it for you. So. Got it. Well, what would you if someone's listening to this for the first time and they've got this great idea and they're not quite sure what to do? How much of it is trusting your instincts, having experience? What type of advice would you give the next guy that's that's got that brilliant idea that's ready to pull the trigger. What would you tell them? Um, yeah, so I, I, I've been to a lot of uh, trade shows uh, yeah, prior to COVID, and I, I, I often walk the floor and I see a lot of inventors there, and, and I talk with a lot of them, and um, you know, the I guess the advice, the best advice would be, um, if you have something that you really, really believe in, um, you should probably talk to your closest friends, you know, who you trust, and get their feedback as well because it's, it's good to have multiple uh, views because they may be seeing something that you don't. Um, then from there, I would say doing, you know, really investigating um, the market, you know, those and, and um, online, Amazon in particular, to see what else is in there in that space. You might, in that investigation, you might find that there's already something out there that's, that's super close to your idea or that is better than your idea, then from there you could, you know, improve on it or you could say, you know what, 
they've already done it or it's already saturated. Let me let me think about something else. Um, and then once you pass all those tests and you're still really excited about it, then you know you should definitely try to build a if you can build a prototype, something that you can you know test and and further prove that it works. Okay. You know? Proof of concept. And then <laughs> if there's more tests, is is if you, if you pass all if you check all those boxes, then I would say you know save money if you don't already have savings. You know it may take you a year, it may take you two years. Save enough five thousand, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, and then you know jump into it because even if it doesn't work the first time, uh, that learning experience I think is you know invaluable. Priceless. Solomon, thank you very much for your time. Um, congratulations on all your success. You've got a you got a thank hit. You. People are happy about it. I see it everywhere. So great job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot.